Well, we're heading back to, actually heading to Niagara Falls. I'm gonna do all the videos on the way to Niagara Falls. Then we're gonna have a wonderful lunch in Niagara Falls. Now you may say, why Niagara Falls, other than it being a beautiful place? Well, I have to head back to Cleveland tonight as I have a 6 a.m. flight to Kentucky out of Hopkins Airport in Cleveland tomorrow. You may say, why Hopkins? Because there wasn't one in Buffalo that could get me back out of, the, the whole thing is the return, right? How long, uh, where can I fly into? Uh, my first choice is obviously Buffalo, then it was Toronto, neither were available, but there was a 7-Eleven flight from uh, Nashville International Airport, BNA, um, back to Cleveland. So that is the route I took. Now, I want to talk about the two-year-olds. Before we start with the two-year-olds, I'm going to make a little announcement. Drebin looked great qualifying today, but there was a few little drops of blood found. Now, this is not the first time that Drebin has shown a little blood. And right away, back in February, we had trained him, I think it was February, we had trained him a mile and a half. He had some mucus um, coming out of his nose, and it was going around, so we'd scoped a few horses. We scoped him and found out that he bled a little bit. Now, it was because of the mucus, but there was some blood found there. Now, right away, an alarm went off in my head and said, this is the exact same thing the three-point blue chip went through. He was always close to where you're like, we'll be able to treat him if we clean up that mucus and work on those pimples, that, that redness in his throat, there won't be any blood. That is a great argument, and it may work sometimes. It did not work with three-point blue chip. He stayed off Lasex because it is taboo a little bit to put two-year-olds on Lasex. But as they go faster, then we refine the breed. They start getting faster like thoroughbreds and thoroughbreds spring leak pretty easy. Now, um, I can say wholeheartedly that Drebin has been the only two-year-old that we've scoped this year that showed blood. And we've watched pickpocket extremely closely also all year training pickpocket's been scoped 10 times he's been scoped once it just seems like uh, the walner horses that we had were a little bit a little more prone to it that might be us that might be him a little bit We're nice horses so it's pretty hard i'm certainly not going to stop trying to purchase the, the breed because there was a little blood shown on some horses. But what I am going to do is be a little proactive. Be damned the taboo of horse racing and the, the ire of the older horsemen. We are putting driving on Lasix before he ever races. I want to blame somebody? Blame me. For the horsemen out there say you should never race a two-year-old on Lasix. Okay, good for you. That's awesome. I had this actually conversation with Jeff Gorell about two years ago, and it was the week after. We put um, Three Point Blue Chip on Lasix. And he said, you know, the horseman I talked to said the horse should never be on Lasix. I said, well, I, I can't tell you who you talk to. All I can tell you is Three Point Blue Chip is and was and has been the healthiest horse in the world training down. Looks like a good horse. We've scoped him seven, eight, nine, ten times probably four or five times before he raced and it was always there was always that trickle there right a couple of spots even the nights he won the maiden we scoped him after he won his maiden race and found a little bit of blood but when he's coming 27 seconds with a bow in his neck you know you're always thinking to yourself we should be able to we should be able to mitigate that you know try this supplement throughout the week whether it be you know breathe easy or airways or any a number of those things you know use the flexi neb on them or the nebulizer it just always seemed like there was a couple of spots but he always raced good breeders crown night elimination he's fourth be what I, I can't remember perfectly he was close enough to making the final that when we scoped him and saw that he was two out of five, I was a little mad. So I had a very candid conversation with the veterinarian on call at the Meadowlands that night. Very nice lady. I've said I've had I've said this at least eight times. This exact one I'm about to tell you at least eight times. And one of them was to Jeff. And I said I spoke to the lady in the paddock. I said so. Let me know what you think, man. I said he's got like six starts. He's we were thinking at the time of supplementing him to the matron. Remember back when we did? 
and he still potentially could race in the kindergarten, I think, eliminate or the Valley Victory. He needed the yes, he needed the points or money from the matron to get in the Valley Victory. That's what happened. She said, Well, Mr. McDonald, I've been a thoroughbred vet for a long time, and I've seen two year olds and three year olds bleed, be turned out, given a year off, come back, race two or three times, and then on their fourth or fifth start, they show Lasix on the program. They've been put on Lasix. So I used to believe that with time they'll get better. But I don't know anymore. I don't know that they do. I think it may be something that's just in their genes. I think is what she said. I'm paraphrasing. Don't, don't quote me. I said, so... She goes, here, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. I wouldn't race this horse again this year without Lasix. And I wouldn't hesitate to put him on it. That is all I needed to hear. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Put the horse on Lasix. The rest is history. He won the Matron. Got out of gear. Or he probably would have won the probably would have won or been close to the Valley Victory also, but, you know, just aside from just a heartbreaking injury with that fracture of his foot, the horse was was a big, big deal to us. It still is and always will be. But the, the moral of the story is that little trickle, it, it doesn't go away. Not in my experience. And he's a walnut also. So, Drebin, not playing around. This has been an ongoing issue we've been fighting with for months. And we have scoped him three or four times when there was no blood. None. We're like, oh, good. We got him going on the right track. Scoped him today. Um, I had actually called Amy to tell the caretaker if the vet shows up to scope the horse. Then I texted the other vet, Dr. Rosenbacher. I said, could you do me a favor? If you're around first line, could you scope Drebin, please? He just called me and said, yeah, one out of five for blood, which isn't a lot. One out of five for blood. Got some pimples and redness in there. It was almost like I took a text message from Three Point Blue Chip from two years ago. Two years ago now. Two years ago. And just resent it to myself. I said, Doc. Uh, so I explained the entire, my my feeling to uh, to the veteran. He said, I'm not going to argue. He said, everything he said is perfectly plausible. Put him on Lasix right away. So Drebin has entered the Lasix program. He can't qualify next week, but he can qualify the week after. We can school him also. So um, that's the plan with Drebin. I know there may be some older horsemen out there saying, I absolutely don't think a two-year-old should be on Lasix. My, my rebuttal of that would be why. So uh, Drebin has entered the Lasix program I consider good reason heading into his first lifetime start. And I have zero qualms about him. AC Swan, still a couple of weeks away. She trained good this morning, I was told, uh, I believe. And she'll have to train, probably school her actually. She can go to school on Tuesday. I watched act Activation train this morning. Jog cart last quarter in 30 seconds at a mile and a half. Joby went with him. I thought the horse looked good. He's going to be headed to, I guess, the first Stallion Series race. Remember that? I guess we can race him. Let's race him and see what he's going to fit. I don't think the first Cyrus take. The third is when the All-Stars is. So for the Colts, for sure, the first stake race is until the 10th or the 11th at the very earliest. Uh, I don't want to, I'll, I'll get to the source in a second. Affection will start the Cyrus Stakes next week. She'll be heading over to Tim midweek. Um, I thought the Philly raced absolutely fantastic, or, or trained absolutely fantastic last week, qualified great the week before. Um, Ali Baba, 2 4 last quarter in 28 seconds. She is going to be re qualifying next Friday. Very happy with her. And Tilly's Hannah Wright, a wonderful message with Jim. I love. All our conservative owners out there, I get them all the time and say, maybe, you know, this guy, Jim says, you know, could he race in the fairs? Jim, just relax. Relax. Uh, I need, and if you don't want to relax, you can just go back and pull up Austral Hanover's two-year-old beginning. With the caveat that he was the worst horse we trained last year, training down. On qualifying time, at qualifying time, I think it's fair to say that Austral Hanover was the worst horse we had ready to qualify in June. That's not being sarcastic. That's literally truthful. 
I don't think there was a worse horse with lower expectations than Austral Hammer and became my favorite horse by the end of the year and just a really, really nice horse to be around. So don't count out the breeding of Antilles Hanover at all because the one thing, the second thing we have in common, well, I guess the one thing we have in common aside from their overall ability at this time or our parent ability is their parent, international money. So let's not worry too much about Antilles Hanover just yet. Uh, Arson, I thought Arson uh, looked amazing his first start. Clearly one of our best horses right now and uh, favorite tomorrow in Kentucky. So good luck to me. Good luck to you. Blanton's Blue, very unfortunate break from Blanton's Blue. Lost a shoe. That rhymed. Doesn't make it any more funny. Blanton's Blue with a break uh, at Yonkers Raceway. Hopefully he can make that up in his next start, which will be July the 5th at Buffalo Raceway. Um, Born to Dance. Oof, you get roughed up a little bit the other night, but kept coming. Dug right through the wire. Love the tenacity. Mile and 55 from Born to Dance. Uh, Cherahola, she was a little sore, actually, training the other day. And pulling up left hind. You know, I said to Jason, I said, any sort of injury at all is going to cost her the season. And, and to be fair, she's okay right now if we had to rest her um, with higher expectations of 2024. I think I'd be okay with it. Uh, but I want to get her looked at nonetheless. She trained okay. She qualified great. 2-4. Very happy with her qualifier. But I um, I want to head the back go over her and look at her and see how she feels heading into 2023. The summer campaign of 2023. But she has been much, much better. And I was really impressed with the way she qualified. I liked the way she looked. Uh, did not know, as turned out, that Philly's knees were hurting her quite a bit. So we turned her out for the summer don't believe. Don't talk about Bruno. Will uh, qualify next Friday. No, next Saturday at Mohawk will be Bruno's first lifetime qualifier. Uh, Drebin, I talked about him in the outset. He was fantastic qualifying day. Third, beat a length. I don't think he got beat because of any sort of bleeding issue. I think that was very minimal and probably didn't probably didn't bother him at all. My concern with the bleeding is that it will compound over time, and I don't want to see it. So Drebin. Uh, Drebin will uh, be on the Lasex program and well, he's qualified now 2-1 last quarter and 29 last half 58 and ready to go I was impressed with what I saw from him uh, Easy in the turns will probably come in another three weeks I think we'll probably have her in into the burn. Uh, electric line, same type of thing, around end of July first part of August we'll bring him back Flash Fly will race next Saturday at the Meadows, I believe we'll probably start her in the Stallion Series, uh, but I like what I've seen from uh, Flash Fly. <coughs> George of the Jungle has now began swimming. Uh, no, he begins Monday swimming, so three weeks of swimming for him. Goldbug Hanover, Steve Palermo jumped up and bought all the shares. All the shares off everybody, and has decided he doesn't want to race, so he wants a breeder. She is going to be a broodmare, so, and I don't blame him. Well-bred horses, Locatelli's sister by Green Shoe. Yeah, nice filly. So good luck to Steve, and, and we'll definitely be on the lookout for that baby, as I'd be more than happy to uh, buy this one. Where is this lunatic going? This guy just passed everybody on the shoulders. Crazy or what? Anyway, uh, great bet. Great qualifier from Great Bet. He's supposed to be in Tuesday. I apologize. I should know as this video is being coat. This video is being posted on or uh, shot on Saturday. I should know if he's in, but yeah, I know he was entered in to go uh, Tuesday at Georgian Downs. Um, Gypsy Hill qualified good, little bumpy in the corners. Now that won't play much of a role on July the first at Sayota, but what will we do after? He may actually just get the hobbles on. That's a possibility also, because he's just slapping at his jacks a little bit and his knees. Um, you know, would he need a little bit of a helping hand with the hobbles would that help probably yeah not positive but it might help so we'll see uh after july the first i don't think there'll be any problem getting him around Sayota. um he'll only get better i think yeah, just such a nice horse he just looks like a nice horse also uh hallie in the clouds will be out probably till august sometime we'll uh we'll have her out till then really yeah i was gonna say really happy obviously i'm not happy that we don't get the racer at two but the horse that she looked like when we turned her out is good. She's sound, 
feeling good, looks really good. So uh, I am kind of happy with uh, with Hallie in the clouds and, and how she's uh, and how she has been uh, progressing. I know she had a little struggle there; her knees got bothering her. We had to stop with her, but really happy with. Um, really happy with how we put her away and how she looks and I think she's going to be a really nice horse for us in 2024 um, I'm fancy like whoa she ever come a long way in a short period of time she went from being a, a lazy little slob that didn't really want to do a whole lot of work to pacing in 54 in a piece her first lifetime starting a half mile track that is very hard to do insider trading I wouldn't say I'm super stressful about Tuesday. Tuesday, it's going to pour rain, and she has to qualify or she can't race on Saturday. I, I'm not super enthusiastic about racing her back in four or five days anyway. But I would like to see her qualify, and I would like to see her get started racing. Here's a filly that was pretty well bomb-proof all year, and then has been the opposite the last three times we went with her. So, a little odd. Let's see if we can get her off uh, back on the beaten path on Tuesday in the, in the mud, it appears. Insider trading will be back in in a few weeks also. We'll bring that guy back in. Jacob said he is as big as an elephant now, is what he, is what he said the other day. Irresistible sun looks good. That's the other guy that caught the straight maiden. It's going to be a little salty for him. He needs a little push in the right direction. He looks so good right now, this horse. But I think he's just scratching the surface. He's self-conscious, and I don't think he even realizes how good he is. But I suspect they'll have a better idea come Wednesday evening. Uh, J-Port Beach Boy, I would have liked, liked to see him get up in the action today. Uh, whether we go for a qualifier or a race is next start, the horse is capable of good things, but not from getting away last. I just think that maybe that's my fault. I should have called Johnny and said that to him. But either way, he'll be fine, whether we choose to qualify him again or whether we race him at Grand River in Georgia, and I think the horse will be just fine. Uh, Lebec in action. Terrible qualifier. Maybe one of the worst charted lines of the season, 2-9, I believe. She had to have tied up. I actually got a call to that and Jason and ask if they got the blood work back on Lebec in action. Probably going to get those flip-flops off her also uh, and head to the fair with her um, sooner than later, I think. And I saw an avalanche of shares appear once you're Of course, her qualifier was terrible, but she's a much better horse than that. She trained in 2.5 last week. You know, the 2.9 mile clearly was, um, you know, clearly the work of something going on inside the field. We'll get to the bottom of it and get her back in to qualify for sure. And then Lonely Lakewood, the break the other day, that was... And a forced error, a very forced error. Jody forced him into a position where he had to make a break. Um... But he'll race uh, in the PA All-Stars. I'm really eager to see the feedback from Scott and, and Megan, quite frankly, on this guy after we race him. Uh, Lover's Play is at the clinic. My hope is to have her home Monday. I just messaged Dr. Latessa and said, hey, can we get this filly here? Um, so my hope is we have her home Monday. I'll let you know on Monday if that's the case. Mick Paisley trained today, trained good. She was coming off a little bout of sickness. We scratched her Friday. She just wasn't up to it. Uh, and that may sound stupid to you. You may be like, how's she not up to it Friday, but she's up to it Saturday? Well, it's up to the horse. There's no temperature. $8 breakfast seemed good today. $8 lunch afterwards also. Don't train her hard. Just train her. We had a spot where we were going in 2-4, 2-5, 2-6 with punch the clock and, um, and the trotting colts. So we decided to just insert her into that group. Mel Gibson, I trained him in two minutes last week. I would like to get a start in him this week. Um, hopefully we can get one into him. Memory and imagination was unbelievably good. Uh, if you ask me right now, all right, so Pickpocket's probably your best trotter right now. Who's second? I believe it's his Colt. And he looked unbelievable training today. I was thoroughly impressed with the way memory and imagination went about his work. Just really, really impressed with him. Militant, I thought to be two divisions now. Now Johnny drove him last time, so he knows him a little bit better now. He should be coming into a better frame of mind and know the horse a little bit more. Five horse fields, so he's getting paid regardless. But uh, I think it's a five, maybe a six. I don't know. Um, but Militant's coming in better now, so I'm eager to see how he's going to do. Mounds for all. James was really impressed. James very rarely throws away, throws around compliments for the babies, um, and he really liked Mounds for all. So can't wait to see how he does. We might even race him next week at Mohawk. Uh, no chance in Hill. He's back going uh, back on the mend. He's in that uh, Aqua treadmill. I think we're probably going to get that leg cleaned out and then cryo it. 
and then hopefully put that little injury to bed. Uh, but it'll be a while before we start him back up. I wouldn't be looking at any uh, resurgence of his 2023 um, aspirations. I just want to see the horse come back good. It's a big, strong colt, and probably one of the more lovable horses we have, to be honest. He's a real, real, he's like a big teddy bear. And I hope that he comes back really good. Oh, snap, you. It says swimming. She's not swimming. She's in the aqua treadmill starting this week, I believe. Um, just want to see those knees fill in a bit. Very happy with the way she's looked. I will tell you this. The medication that we put in Drebin's knees looks like it, it works very, very well. Um, it was Dr. Latessa's um, uh, opinion that it was a, a good product. And it has looked very good on Drebin. So probably going to find its way into... Uh, Oh, snap you also. You got to give it time. Like, you know, put it in and give the horses a good three weeks, which she has more than that. Three weeks in the aqua treadmill for sure. And then re x ray, see how those knees look. She, they weren't fractured. There were some faint lines there, but you know where that heads, right? When you see a horse that has a little bit of a head nod, it looks like their knee is bothering them. You x ray that knee and it looks like there might be some shadows in there. You know, where there's smoke, there's going to be fire if you keep pushing. So I think we are right on top of it and did the right thing. So good job by Jason and Dr. Latessa. Both Jasons and Dr. Latessa in regards to, oh snap, you. Paycheck Princess looked good the other day. The line looks good, but Chris was very happy with her. He thought that she went really well. Uh, let her hobbles out a little bit for uh, the Meadows. We'll see how she does. She's racing Wednesday at the Meadows. Am I at the Meadows? I'm supposed to, no, I'm driving. I'm supposed to drive. Really don't care. I think, I think Scott might have chicken hawked my drive on really don't care. He said, well, I'm going to be in Buffalo. There's not really need of both of us being there. You already drove the Philly once. Why don't you drive her? So Scott Zeron is listed on Really Don't Care uh, Wednesday in Buffalo. Uh, I, did I just jump over a pile of horses? I did. I did. Paycheck Princess was great. Um, I don't know. I see right what happened. Paycheck Princess was good and hopefully it will be very good on Wednesday. Pickpocket, just a, a tremendous colt. He drew the inside in... Uh, Oak Grove tomorrow. Oak Grove. Uh, punched the clock train in 2-4. Last half in a minute today at Mohawk. James said she was very, very good. Purple People Eater. Uh, nine hole trailing post this week at Northfield Park. Uh, eager to race her too. She's turned into a nice filly. Really don't care. We'll be heading to Buffalo for the New York Sire Stakes. We did put her in the A division. We did put her in the Sire Stake division. We'll see how that, ma how that matches up. But for right now, um, but for right now, uh, really don't care is entered in the Sire Stakes. I jumped over, ready for landing. I talked about him a little bit in the opening. I, I got to take responsibility for that break. If the gate was just moving too slow and he got really angry at me trying to coddle him and pull him back, had I just driven him like a driver, put him on the gate and let him trot out, I don't think we would have had any issues. I, I got to at least take some of that responsibility. So... Uh, I'm going to turn the page on this guy. I'm not going to say that that was his fault. That, that it felt to me, it felt to me like that was my fault the other day. Rito's lady's out in the field. She'll stay out in the field till mid to end August. Uh, Royal Emeralds was amazing the day, and then when you saw the scope after five out of five for Mucus, that only made the race that much more impressive. Uh, a great ask, Jeff, uh, majority owner, or partner anyway, in uh, Royal Emeralds. He had asked me. He said. Do you think there'd be any concerns with having her healthy for Saturday? A great question. So there wasn't big, chunky, yellow stuff. It was just an abundance of uh, more allergy mix than anything else. So you have to be aggressive. And, and Tim and I had talked about this after. We have to be aggressive with the treatment of this filly and then stay on top of it because it will pop up from time to time when she races this summer. So it, the easy answer to your question is no. I don't believe there'll be any problems getting her back to 100% for next Saturday. And if that is what she shows, 5 out of 5 for Mucus, next Saturday's Royal Emeralds might be a scary animal. Seasons of Love, I know she made a break. I know, I saw it. Relax. Uh, I've seen that movie five, six times before. And uh, we know how to fix the end. Don't worry about that. Um, we'll re-qualify Seasons of Love next week. Sedona Hill was amazing in her qualifier, heading to the next generation. Unbeaten in two qualifiers. Uh, we'll see if she can keep that streak alive. Um, Southwind Digit will be heading over to uh, the Meadows for Saturday's races. She'll be in the Stallion Series on Saturday. Sunset Acres Girl will be heading to Michigan soon. We were looking at maybe finding a race for her. It's kind of tough. It's not one for her. 
we'll see how that plays out over the next little while. But right now, as of right now, Sunset Acres Girl is heading to Michigan, going into a pretty watered-down group of two-year-old trotting fillies who are supposed to start in the next 10 days with a pretty good qualifier, 2-3 last half and 59 last quarter and 30 seconds. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I think we're in pretty good shape heading to Michigan. Sweeney was amazing. The other night horse has just been a great horse for quite a while, and I think we're going to have a ton of fun with Sweeney this summer. Third and six will remain out, probably same thing, end of August type situation with him. Time is on my side, 2-2 last quarter and 27 seconds the other day. James said, I think we just got to put him in to qualify and get some, get some speed to chase, and I think he's 100% correct. I can't wait to see this guy qualify a couple of times. Vaccaro Blue Chip, a winner at first asking. This is the father, Patrick Colt, brother to Spider Blue Chip. He was very good at the Meadows. Venice Blue Chip was good also. No, she didn't pace 54, but no, she didn't have to. She will be in fine form come July 1st. I'm certain of that. Victory Blue Chip, trained good today. Looked very good. I'm very happy with him. Watch your mouth, 57, last half 56, last quarter 27. He's ready to rock. Maybe one more qualifier. We'll see. Widespread panic. Apparently, he won a mile and two four and a piece today. Maybe I'm wrong with both of those horses. Him and ready for landing. I didn't think they'd be ready till August. It's not even July. Okay. And winter bells. Uh, how nice was that qualifier? 58 last quarter and 27 flat. Last half 56 in a bit. Just looked great. Looked very, very good. And as James said, just very green Philly. But looked very, very good in qualifying. So with that, you have all your information on all the two-year-olds. You're all up to date now. i got the three-year-olds and four-year-olds and up coming back in just a minute. We'll talk to you all very soon.